So Eloise, we're down here just uh, up near South Cronulla. So why is this important for you? Uh, this is my this is my stomping ground. This is where this is my office. <laughs> um, it's not my oval office. It takes many shapes depending on what what route I run. But um, yeah, I run along the es Esplanade here most days as part of my training. And um, yeah, it's 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 where all the work's done. Yeah, it's a, it's a, a tough place to do your work. Clearly. Yeah. <laughs> Well, actually, last winter I was injured. Funny that we're looking at Shelley Pool. Last winter yeah. I was injured, and I, every day I got in that pool and deep water ran for an hour, wow. and it was um, it was brutal. <laughs> so sometimes it's not that fun. It's, it's and not I was, that nice. I was like, it was actually more torturous than that because I could see, I could watch people, other people running pain free. I'm guessing <laughs> along the Esplanade, and I'm like running in the water in this freezing cold water, shivering, but. I think it's fairly do. generous that anybody running along there is running pain free. Oh, uh, yeah, <laughs> they're probably not. It's what I was thinking. I'm like, oh, woe well, is me. The, but, um, yeah. The outcome of all your hard work was actually getting to the, to like competing at an international level. Mm -hmm. And one of those was the London Olympics. Yeah. What was that like walking out on the London Olympics? Uh, it was amazing. It was, I felt, it was honestly it's so cliche, but my my dream was coming true in wow. that moment, walking out to that start line. I was just having all of these, I remember having all of these flashbacks of um, the moments that I'd really had to fight mm. for for this moment for, of, of standing on the starting line at my first Olympics and all the injuries and the heartbreak and the setbacks that I'd gone through, all the disappointments, all the times that I wanted to quit all the times that I was on crutches and all the times that I was running in freezing cold water and cross training and, you know, just continuing to just push on and believe yeah. that, um, that one day my, my chance would come up and my opportunity would come up and I'd be able to live my dream. And when people see you walking out uh, with the uniform on ready to compete, they don't really think about all that, do they? No, I probably not. Um, but it's what I think about now of other athletes. I always like it's, it's I make it my mission after I compete at major championships to go and, you know, seek out and make friends with other athletes and find out their story because I just find it so intriguing and inspiring the, the story, the backstories of the athletes that um, find themselves at the pinnacle of sport, the pinnacle of um, their event and um, what it what it took to, to get there. Yeah. Hey, um, when did you start running competitively? Like every kid runs. Yeah. <laughs> when yeah. did you start running competitively? Well, I was about five years old when um, I started running. My mum was a really good runner. Um, my uncle was a good runner. So I was already in the family. And my mum used to run with a group called Billy's Bushies in the National Park um, down where I grew up in Grace Point. And yeah, she just used to run, meet them, those guys at 6 a.m. Um, there's a big group of them and, you know, every now and then I'd, I'd, I'd go with her and run as far as I could and then turn around and, and run home. Yep. And that's how it started for me. I started, then I went onto to Little Athletics and kind of kicked off from there. Wow. Do you remember the time where you thought, I could actually make the Olympics or I really want to make the Olympics? Do you remember that thought? Yeah, I do. I remember watching the Barcelona Olympics on TV and I was watching the, the women's distance running events come around, um, go around because that's what I was really passionate about at Little Athletics. That seemed to what I was mm. kind of edging towards. And I just remember being so inspired by watching those women. And I remember turning to my mum and dad, this is as a 10 year old and saying, oh, I'm going to do that one day. Wow. And uh, yeah, yeah. and then it just became a childhood obsession. Yeah, is it a, a kind of is it hard to say that's what I want to do because it's a huge goal? Uh, did you ever think oh, I don't want to say it out loud in case somebody says oh you never made it or you say to yourself I never made it? Is there tension there? I think at that point when I was so young, I wasn't. I didn't really fear failing because yeah. I hadn't failed mm. really before. You know, it wasn't. It probably wasn't until after I'd failed making my first Olympics that I was afraid to say it again, mm. that I was afraid to go, to give it another go or to make it public that I was, that I was trying again because, um, you know, the risk is that there's a, a threat to your identity or a threat yep. to, to other people knowing that you failed or, yeah. you know, and so, yeah, as a kid, it was just like, no, I was so green, you know, like, <laughs> yeah, um, 
you know, kids, they say all the time, you know, I'm going to fly to the moon. And Did, I, feel like, I feel like as adults we should be, we should release a bit, a bit more of that freedom yeah. more often. Is that your biggest disappointment, not getting to those Olympics at first? Um, the first Olympics, which, which was in Sydney, um, I mean, I missed out on three before I finally made London, um, all through injury and all through, you know, devastating, disappointing setbacks. But I learned so much throughout each of them. And like I came to faith, I came to, to become a Christian um, after I missed out on my first Olympics. And then, you know, learned so many other lessons about myself and grew in resilience. And I mean, at the time, no one can tell you that this is gonna be good. <laughs> no one can tell you that missing yeah. out on Olympics and being injured and, you know, having to cross train and do all of the things that you hate to do um, is gonna be good. Yeah. And, you know, but God always brings something good out of those times. When you say you learnt lessons, are they lessons that you learn about how you train and run or are they lessons about your own heart? Both. Um, you know, I learn, learn lessons about how I can practically do things differently and mistakes that I might have made or things that I can do to potentially avoid the same thing happening in the future. Um, and I work with my coach and, you know, um, my training partners to kind of unpack that. And then move forward. I don't think you can dwell on the mistakes too long um, and then make, this, make those changes and then move forward. And then in terms of the heart side, you know, you, you get to find out what you're capable of and what, you know, what you're made of by going through those times and coming through them. And I think you, from learning that, it gives you strength, um, you know, to to get through another hard time or something else outside of running or, you know, things like that. So what is it like to represent Australia? Like they're putting on the kind of Australian uniform. What does that feel like? Yeah, it's an honour. It's, it's, I know there's, there's something about it that makes me go to another level, putting on the, the green and gold. There's something, I've always been able to, to get the best out of myself um, when I've, competed for Australia and when I'm wearing those colours there's something not just um this it's it's not trivial to me it doesn't get lost the fact that I'm I'm competing and I'm representing my country it's it, it what I love to do and um it's an honour and you know a privilege yeah you said that missing out on the Olympics caused you to to come to personal faith mm. what what was the process in that what happened yeah so I was 16 when I qualified for my first Olympics. I was in year 11 at school and, you know, running was who I was. It was, you know, it was everything to me. It was, it was because I was good at it, at it that's why I was, I, I thought that's why I was popular and that's why I was, um, you know, that's why I liked myself, yeah. essentially. Um, and then it was taken away and I, you know, I, I was going to miss the Olympics and I was devastated and um, I got really, really down and discouraged. And I thought that, you know, I grew up in a, um, a Catholic family and we went to, to church every Sunday and, and I still had this really warped sense of who God was. I thought that God was punishing me um, through my injury for something that I'd done wrong. And um, yeah, one, one, one day at school, I was sitting on my own at lunch and it was soon after that I'd just been told that I would miss the Olympics through this injury and, and a, a new girl came over, her name was Lisa, and she sat beside me and she said, hey, I just want you to know that I've been praying for you and that um, I've got some friends from church praying for you. We, we, I heard about what happened with your injury and she said, I'm just believing that God's got a great plan for you and that everything's going to work out. Wow. And I think it just, in that moment, it just really touched me that, that God, that she had this idea of God that, um, that she could pray to him for something so trivial as my, as my injury. Even though it was a big deal to me, I thought that God was so far away from it. Um, I didn't realize that he cared. And so, yeah, I went to church with my new friend, Lisa, and I, I heard the gospel. I heard about Jesus. And... 
yeah, right. You know, after a, after a couple of weeks, I was uh, I I decided that this is what I wanted to live for. Yeah. I wanted to live for Jesus, and I wanted to um, I wanted to become a Christian. How did that change? Did you run faster? No, <laughs> I mean it didn't. It it's not. All of my problems didn't just disappear. My injury didn't get all of a sudden get better, um, although it did over time. Um, but it meant that in my heart, regardless of what happened in running, regardless of uh, what happened with what I did, uh, I was still loved and I was made whole and, um, and I was given a new identity in Christ, you know. I was, before that, I was, my whole value and my worth was wrapped up in running and my out, like the outcome and the results was so, so important to me um, in terms of my identity and who I was. Um, but realizing who Jesus was and having a revelation of who he is and how much he loves me and us, um, that was a game changer yeah, yeah. because it meant that I, it would free me up to do what I was passionate about and what he had given me the gift to do without uh, the threat of losing my identity each time I did that. So deciding to follow Jesus, it wasn't like you lost your competitive edge or your hunger for doing well. It just changed your perspective. Is that yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. It, no, none of that left. It's still, <laughs> still as competitive as ever. Um, but it meant that I was able to, I was able to do more of that. I was able to like fully express myself as Eloise and as a, as a runner and as an athlete, as, an, as a person, um, without the threat of losing my identity in Christ, without the threat of losing my worth and my value because of the result or because of a bad day. Mm. Um, yeah, it's wonderful. Mm.